oh my god, my laptop is on the other side of the couch and my USB drive is on the coffee table. I don't want to disturb my cat sleeping on my lap to get up, get the USB drive, go over to my other computer and then bring, copy the files onto this USB drive and then bring it back to my laptop. There's got to be a solution. Well, I can tell you one thing. There is a solution. Now, that command is going to be secure copy or the SCP command. This is B from Tay Talk Tech. Today, I'm going to show you how to securely transfer files from one Linux, one system to another in Linux. Now, make sure you watch all the way to the end to catch the examples that I'll be providing, as well as uh, recommending a great video just for you. I have a favorite ask, so before we get into it, if you like this type of video and want to see more content like this, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell button for notifications. So let's go ahead and get into it. So you've probably heard of CP and FTP. The CP command is going to allow you to copy something locally, and the FTP will allow you to copy something um, remotely. Now, one of the things that these two things have in common is there's no encryption that is associated with these. So everything is set in clear text. If you were to sit in between that traffic, you would be able to see all of it. Now, FTP as well can be a bit more involved than either SCP or CP. Now, secure copy will encrypt the data over an SSH tunnel. So make sure that when you're using the, the SCP command that you have SSH access to the remote system as well as um, you have the appropriate permissions to be able to copy to and from that system. Let's go ahead and get into the actual con the actual syntax of the command. Now, the of course, it's going to be SCP is going to be the command. Now you have your source and destinations. I'm laying it out here. Now, your source is really, it's not always going to necessarily be the source of what you're doing, but you want to keep in mind that that's going to be the host machine. Now, the destination is not always necessarily going to be the destination. It's going to be the remote system. And and sometimes it can be in the it can be in the other direction. So I'm using these just to go ahead and kind of give you the idea of of how it's going to work. Now, these can be flipped around. You can go from the destination to the source, depending on how you are transferring files. I will go ahead and show all of this to you once we get into those examples. So make sure you keep watching. Now, as far as as far as far inputting the information into the source and destination fields is uh, source and target may be specified as a local path name, a host with optional path, or use a URI. Now, let's go ahead. A path, a path name is going to be anything to a file. So if we just go to... Um, let's just go and do, let's do real path, my test. And if you're not familiar with the real path command, it just gives you the, the full pathway to a file. All right. So this right here is going to be the full path name. So, in you know, when you're talking about your source file, or, you know, when you're wanting to either use your host system as either the source or the destination, you can do it in a path name format because you don't need to know your own IP address to interact with your own machine. All right. So the other way that you can do it is, is you can do it within, um, you can do it with a remote host with optional path. So that's going to be, let me just get this up here. Let's just do SCP. Right, like this. So you would have your username on that remote system. You would have you do the the ampersand, and then you do the the that remote uh, host IP address, and then you would do colon, and then pass the file on that system. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit enter here, just because I don't really care about that. You could also do it this way. All right. I'll just do SCP is you could do secure copy at, I'm sorry, secure copy colon uh, back, uh, forward slash forward slash. Uh, then you do the username on that system, you do the ampersand, you would do the, the remote host IP address, and then you would do colon port if that is going to be uh, anything. Um, you wanna make sure that you connect on the right port as well as colon and path to the file. So a little bit longer to do it this way, but keep in mind, this is gonna be just like a just like a website, you know, so you want to go ahead and make sure that you put it in in that in that fashion, because that's what it's expecting when you put it in this manner. Now, there's a few options that I want to go ahead and go over here. So let's go ahead and go up to let's go up to the man page here. 
I'm not going to go over every single option, but I want to go up with some that, that came to mind when I was putting this together. So the first one is going to be the I option, which is this one right here. So it allows you to select files from which the identity or private key for a public key authentication is read. So basically you're just inputting a, an SSH private key file um, directly. So you don't have to. Now, if it's already on your system, great. It does that automatically. But if you have the file there for whatever reason and you need to use it manually, you can do it that way. Now, the other command, the other option that we want to go ahead and go over is the capital P for port. Now, capital P for port is important because not all not all traffic is going to be on the same SSH port. Depending on the configuration of the system, you may have a different port. Say you're using, I don't know, let's just use port 100. You know, you would want to specify that it's on port 100 because if you don't specify the port, it's going to go ahead and try to do it on 22, and you're going to get um, you're going to get an error. Now the other one is going to be the is going to be the lowercase p, which preserves modification times, access times, and file modes bits from the source file. So if you want to make sure that it looks just as it did as far as the metadata does on the on the remote system, you'll go ahead and do it that way. Or you know if you're sending it from your system to the to the remote system, however you, you just want to make sure that those. Uh, those stay on that file. Now the other option is the next option I want to go over is going to be the Q option, which is for quiet mode, which disables progress meter as well as any warning and diagnostics with SSH. So if you don't like it giving you, giving you any yelling, as I like to think of it, the next one is going to be cap. Uh, I'm sorry, the TAC R, which is going to recursively allow you to copy an entire directory. So make sure you specify the TAC R if you want to copy an entire directory and not just a, a single file. And the last one's going to be TAC Burbose, which is right here, which gives you more, you know, debugging information so that you can go ahead and get everything squared away, hopefully, with that with that output. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And before moving on to the command examples, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it, give it a dislike if you didn't like it. Lastly, let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any questions down below in the comments. So I've got three total VMs here that we're working with today. All right, and I've set up some files on them so we can go ahead and practice this. Now we can kind of see what I, my handiwork here. Let me clear that out. Let's do an LS. All right, so we've got we've got peppermint file here. All right, this is going to be the we want to take this we want to take this file and we want to go ahead and transfer it over to this VM. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do that. We're going to do. I'm going to do peppermintfile.txt. Let me get the IP address for the remote host. All right, we're going to do. All right, and we want to go ahead and put it in the home tag B direct, I'm sorry, the home tac admin user directory to make sure that it gets there. Now, if you wanted to specify a different name, you could do that with another slash and then the name, but I don't really care about the name. All right, so now it's first time I've ever connected, so it wants me to go ahead and do the usual first time stuff. All right, perfect, and we can see there it's pretty small file, so that was super quick. Now, let's go over here. Let's do an ls. And boom, peppermint. <laughs> oh, there it is, peppermint file. I was I was testing stuff earlier, and I think I just kind of didn't fill out the full name. So yeah, there it is. All right. So now let's go ahead and copy a file from the remote host to the local host. So let's let's go ahead and invoke that command again. Real path neon file text. So we can get the full path of this file. Let's go back over here to our host machine. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and do an SCP. And we're going to go ahead and specify for the remote system. All right, and we're going to do like this. One thing I will, like, I, I would like to point out is, is before, you know, before before any of this first directory, make sure you put the, the slash in front of it because 
you need to put that because you need to include the slash for the root of the remote file system. So that's the file that we run right there. And then what we can do is we'll just go ahead and you can put it in any directory, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the local directory. There we go. Let's go ahead and put in the password. Perfect. And let's just do an LS and boom, right there. Neon file.txt. Cool. Now the last thing that I want to show you is is copying files between two remote systems. So we've got a third, that's what the third VM here is for. So we've got this one right here. Now let me go ahead and do another real path. On this one, all right. Now let's go ahead and go over to the third machine that we've got here. So let's do SCP and we're going to copy from the first one. We're going to do admin user at the IP address, which is 192.168.122.248. We're going to do this and we're going to do that. All right. And we're going to go ahead now go over to the destination, which is admin user at And actually this IP address is not right. We need to do it from 16. So let's do that. I'm gonna come over here and do 192.168.122.248. I'm gonna do colon, then we're gonna do the real path. All right, and let's go ahead and make sure that everything is good here. We got 16, which is the host machine. We're gonna do there, and then we're gonna put that, yep, it should all be the same. All right, it's going to have us put in, you see this, it's going to have us put in the destination one here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then it's going to have us put in it for the source. And give it just a second. That's kind of weird that it's doing it that way. Whoops, forgot to, I guess it doesn't, I've never paid attention to the order of the two. Oh, you know what? Hold on, I'm sorry. Got to fix this. Some real-time troubleshooting here. Let's go ahead and come up here. And some of you, some eagle-eyed out there, may have seen this already. But I need to make sure I put the right username. This is the only one that's got a different username. What is going on here? Uh, destination, no such file open. Let me troubleshoot this, and I'll be right back. All right, figured it out. We just need to go ahead and change the username to the correct one on the destination machine. So let's try this one again. And there we go. Let's go ahead and just come over here to our destination machine and check this out. LS and boom, we've got the Rocky file right there.